Hey guys, Table Air. Today we get a look at uh, Lexington. It's an American Tier 7 carry. We got Mr. King on the screen there. I got Fish Boy and Swirsky. Fish Guy is uh, increases the torpedo speed and Swirsky increases your ship's concealment. Now here we got a game, Domination Mode, Fall in Line. I believe this is probably my highest damage carrier game to date. Maybe my first high caliber on it. I don't know. I'm not a carrier expert expert by any means and I don't necessarily intend to become one at least not anytime soon but uh, I think overall this is you know relatively well played uh, so I got some pointers here I as a mainly a surface ship player you know I got an idea of what I would like the carrier to be doing now right off the bat check the destroyer deployment we got two destroyers per team ours spawn on C and B and there we drop uh, torpedoes as a uh, move that I picked up from the PC players that play this stuff. You can drop that, and that'll send half your planes back. That way, if we encounter a destroyer and we want to hover over them, we're not going to lose the whole squad, and we'll have more planes ready to go, uh, you know, for next launch. But anyway, getting back to the destroyer deployment, there's no one on A, and since a main purpose of the carriers is to scout, we're going to come over here and try and help these guys. Now we're picking up battleships. we got a two battleship uh, deployment over here. So it's possible there is a destroyer over here, uh, but with the carrier, it's also possible that one of the ships that would normally spawn over here got uh, relegated to the carrier play. So anyway, we're going in for a strike on the Bismarck, half the squad, keep in mind, and uh, we hit them there, get about 6k. So fairly high damage. I think the tier 3 and the tier 5 carriers, their damage output I'm fine with, i.e. it's a pretty low <laughs> damage output, but... The tier 7 carriers, they can occasionally do quite a bit of damage. And uh, I guess we'll see that here in this game. Anyway, we're kind of operating under the assumption that there's no destroyers on A. There might be, but we're operating under the assumption. Now we got torpedoes coming into our Akatsuki that's attacking B. Those could be strictly from the uh, torpedo bombers that's trying to hit it. And note the other red destroyer in the background there. So we got one destroyer, account of four. I'm looking for the other one. Okay, but I want to support this guy. I'm assuming that's possible that the enemy destroyer is over here. He might be trying to torp this cloud. So I'm zooming over here, trying to spot the thing. Don't spot anything. Uh, what I should be thinking about right now is, okay, we don't think there's one on A. Uh, we already saw the one on C get killed. That means there's probably one up the gut. And that's actually what's going to be happening here. He's going to be zooming back line, trying to attack me. We'll see that here in the next minute or two. But... In the meantime, we're just going to go ahead and attack this Richie who's just sitting back here. And uh, here's a full squad, HE bomb drop, and there we get about 10k plus of fire. So immediately we send the planes back. I believe the planes are immune when you call them back. I might be wrong about that. There's a lot of things about carriers that I believe <laughs> to be true, but I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, getting back to my thought process here, I need to be thinking more about, and we should probably go back to HE bombers. I like to attack the destroyers with HE bombers more. We need to find that other destroyer. I'm, at this point in time, I'm like, okay, we don't know where he is. Uh, maybe we should support A, because, of course, Salt Spawn's going to overwhelm the A spawn almost every game for no reason whatsoever, but that's what always happens. But then we see the torpedoes launch for our battleship, and we briefly spotted the destroyer. So should be uh, I'll be slamming on the comms here and letting everyone know we got some problems back here. And we got a destroyer that's actually going to come back and support us, which is clutch, because this thing... Is coming in hot. It's on a anti-carrier run. I don't prescribe that as a good play for destroyers, but a lot of destroyers will try and do that. They'll just try and get to the back line, uh, hit the carrier, and then proceed to tor battleships all day long. So uh, we got the torpedoes in the water there, and then we immediately switch back to the HE bombers. Again, this is my personal preference. I think it's easier for me to hit these destroyers with the bombers than the torpedoes. The torpedoes are very slow. Uh, but drop our HE shot there. I don't know if we hit him or not, but uh, getting them with a little bit of secondaries. But again, that destroyer coming back here actually saves our bacon. Now we got torpedoes in the water. I drop the planes and then manually take control of the, the uh, carrier. If you're going to rely on your autopilot to be zooming around as a carrier player, which you should be doing, uh, if the torpedoes are coming at you, of course, they're aimed at the indicator, and that's... The indicator is a perfect shot assuming you continue in a straight line so we took manual control there dodged the salvo our Akatsuki took him out 
uh, with a great play there. Then we proceed to go back and reassign our position. And I think almost every time we launch planes, I'm going to go back and kind of reevaluate where should I be putting this thing? Because putting where you put the carrier, where you position it, is an important part of carrier play. You want to get as close to the enemy team without getting spotted. And of course, you always got to keep in mind, even if your ship's concealment is good enough to uh, protect you from, you know, you're not within the surface ships on the enemy teams, they're not going to detect you by themselves. You always got to keep in mind that the carrier at any time could just send the planes over your way, spot you, and if you're really close to enemy ships, even though they can't spot you on their own, uh, they could potentially whack you pretty hard. So you got to always be adjusting your position in these things. But again, you want to, you don't want to get too far back. You don't want to sit on the moon or even on Mars. I'll launch those planes because the longer they have to travel to the targets, the less strikes you're going to get, the less spotting you're going to get, the less influence you're going to have on the game. Just like battleships. If you're way out of position, way in the back, you're not really doing anything. You're kind of worthless to your team. Uh, so anyway, we helped off with that hipper there. We got the center. Now we're that King George just takes out the hipper there. Then he's going to move into C. So we got our win condition set up here. We're going to capture and control the middle and one flank. And now... Uh, we just kind of want to try and eliminate the ships and defend the middle uh, from their advances because they're going to be trying to flip B, assuming they're trying to win the game. So we got an Iowa, we got a Bismarck, and then a Hood behind them coming in here. Um, HE bombers, you want to be attacking these ships, you know, if they're coming at you or away from you. Torpedoes, of course, you want to attack their broadsides. But in that case, number one, they were kind of forced to turn towards us, but we had a nice tight channel there, and... Uh, due to the close proximity of those ships. So I think we're going to get a couple torps there. And then we just immediately go and do attack mode on this hood here and uh, launch. If, if you're thinking to yourself, okay, we're going to go down anyways, let's try and get that quick second follow-up uh, launch in the water immediately. And I think he must have overturned there because we actually hit him there, even though it looked like it was going to dodge. So I think as a player, a surface ship player, dodging those torps, I find myself overcorrecting on them a lot. They go really, really slow, so it's it, it's kind of easy to almost forget about them or just overreact to them. But here we're going to try and approach a broadside a shot on these guys now. Note they're pushing into our spawn pretty heavily. They're going to whittle down. I believe it's a Bismarck on our team, but whatever battleship that is to my north on the map there. He's not long for this world. But, of course, we want to try and help them out. So these guys, this is a torpedo strikes dream when you get these ships this close. Yet another reason not to put your battleships right next to each other. But uh, I think we probably hit them all on the Iowa there, uh, which is what I was hoping to do since he was the lowest and, um, you know, potentially a more dangerous ship than the Bismarck if played properly at least. But anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue to try and strike him now. We'll, have, we'll see a couple examples of this. You can see this Akatsuki coming here uh, behind me. Or I think he's like basically right under me on this map. Trying to create crossfires either with your surface ship's main guns, if they're battleships or cruisers, or potentially destroyers in torpedoes. Now, I don't play carriers enough, and I'm not a good enough carrier player to really have perfected this by any means. But the concept is, you see how this Bismarck is kind of turning into me right there? If I can get into situations where maybe my destroyer is unspotted, but he's coming in at a 90 degree angle to that strike, well, the carrier player is going to see me. He's going to probably react to me. He's going to dodge those torps, but if I can time it, and especially you can do this with the division for sure, if you can kind of time it where those all of a sudden the torpedoes from the destroyer are coming in at a crossfire angle, uh, well, that's devastating. That's kind of the same concept you want to be doing with battleships. That's why you want to spread out with battleships, get some distance, because then the enemy is forced to angle towards one of you. Then the other guy can have access to that broadside and start dealing devastating damage. So I'm going to kind of see that here. We got the HE bombers, so it's not as effective here. But uh, this is kind of the idea where we'd want to approach from the south here. And maybe he's being distracted right now. The destroyer shoots. Now, he's already got the kill shot coming in. I just don't like destroyers usually shooting in that instance because it's just kind of like tapping the guy in the side of the skull it's not really gonna hurt them but it is gonna annoy them and it's going to alert them okay there is the destroyer there so he's probably getting spotted by the planes he's like all right i'm spotted anyways might as well try and start a fire see if we can cycle that damage count i get the thinking i'm not saying it was a horrible play or anything but 
in general, when you got those torpedoes in there, if you can remain undetected, you don't want to alert them to your presence because they'll be like, okay, there's the destroyer. Obviously, torps are coming. Let's go ahead and angle towards them. So here we're looking pretty good. We got four ships to two. Uh, I'm going to continue to move in. I'm hoping this destroyer would get on A. I think that's a much stronger play. He's just going to try and attack the hood. He's the guy that saved me earlier, so I can't get too mad at him. But uh, we're actually going to see this game winds up being a lot tighter than it might look at the moment. And it's possible for the, these guys to win. We'll see how that unfolds here in the game. But if he just goes over to A, secures that, then it's more or less impossible for them to win. So we're attacking the hood here. we got the dive bombers coming in. And he's kind of reacting to me how I normally do. Once the planes are overhead, I just kind of usually throw it in a tight circle like that. And that kind of lined them up for that shot that we're going in from the rear of the ship. Remember, HE bombers, we want to either come at the bow or the stern as opposed to the broadside. Uh, but here I'm thinking to myself, okay, what's the situation here? Like, we got the hood way in the corner. He's irrelevant currently towards the outcome of the game. Uh, the Shikaku over here... Red, he's, we know where he is. We can see where the planes are landing, launching from. Uh, but my team can't see him. So I'm like, all right, we got to go over here, make sure that he can't cause problems. Because this guy is, he's whacking our team. And I think he ends up killing both of these battleships, if I recall. Uh, so I think he's doing a pretty good job as well. But uh, if we can just get him out of there, then that limits the hood's map control to just his firing range. As opposed to the carrier, which can attack and cause problems all over the map so you know we're going in here we're going to try and cause some damage spotting him i would like to drop one of those uh fighter planes or whatever as well as a permanent spotter but the aa shoots him down so quick that you know to get close enough to that carrier to have him spotted i think the plane would get shot down right away so i don't know if it's necessarily worth doing that but you can consider that when you're in position to see like surface ships like battleships or potentially cruisers you could drop one of those plane consumables there, and then that can act as kind of a remote spotter and uh, keep the area spotted for a little bit while longer anyways. Uh, so, and again, we are we got the two caps to one, so they're basically forced to kill all of us at this point in time. They can't possibly catch us and score. I recognize that. I recognize, you know, the potential. You can see those torpedoes swarming our King George over there, the destroyer. Uh, he's hell-bent on torping this battleship, which usually that <laughs> results in people doing the stuff that's less than optimal in terms of winning the game. So I immediately say, all right, well, we're going to send the carrier back up to Timbuktu, and hopefully we can kill this thing. Once we kill this thing, then I can kind of control my position, make sure we don't get, uh, you know, spotted randomly or whatever. Uh, but you can see here, Chicago is getting pretty low. I think I got a fire on him, and I think the King George has a fire on him, and he's actually going to go down here, but look at his planes on the map there. He's in position to harass that King George down. He goes the carrier, but he's actually going to finish off the battleship, and then he's going to go here and spot this destroyer, and the destroyer is close enough to the hood where the hood could potentially kill him, and then, who knows, can the hood find me and kill me? Two minutes left in the match, not necessarily great, so I should probably readjust my heading you know, I'm not going to get on A to flip the cap or anything uh, at this point in time. So I shouldn't necessarily be going there. And by going from east to west, I might be within his range. So I, if watching this back, I would just go back to that northward heading. Go put it all the way to the north or even towards C. Just stay away from this thing. Because all we got to do is make sure we don't die. But here I'm attempting the crossfire torpedo thing again now he had aimed right on the indicator and the guy was going straight towards him so this actually ends up missing here but this is a good illustration of the concept where i can turn that guy my way because he knows he can see me much better and he can see the uh destroyer and somehow i hit him there <laughs> even though he turned into me i don't know what happened there but that's kind of a good illustration of the concept and i think that's a kind of a high level carrier play and especially if you're in a division with the destroyer you can kind of coordinate that intentionally and absolutely wreck people doing that so once again the hood can see us coming he doesn't necessarily have the ability to see the destroyer so he'll react to my position i can force him to kind of dodge my torps and then the crossfire torps coming from the north for the nice juicy kill shot that's how you would write it out on paper how easy that is to implement in the game i have no idea but at this point in time we're doing pretty good here score is ticking away 
Uh, that last, I think that carrier player is doing a good job. He's trying to keep that plane away from us and still try and use it as a spotter. Um, so I dropped that fighter consumable there, hoping to kill his plane. And then we're going to come in here and uh, do a little shimmy shammy and kill the hood there for the high caliber and to finish the match. So that's a look at the Lexington for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. And if you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, well, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships and it's coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you. And see y'all later. Peace.